Hello everyone, my name is Julie and I am the co-owner of Fandia Fabrics. We are so glad you're here. Today is day one of our week-long sew along. And we're starting with the Pocket Pout by Lynn's Handmade. Just a few things before we jump right in. First, thank you so much for watching. Ginger and I hope you enjoy and have fun and maybe learn some things along the way. Second, I apologize in advance for the weird breaks and pauses in the video, um, you know, that just don't really mesh well. I have two little ones, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so I've had to stop and check on them. Last, this is my first so long video, so constructive feedback is welcome. If you have any questions, we're here to help. You're gonna need the pattern by Lynn's Handmade. When you print it out, make sure that this square, which Lindsay has included on both pages of the pattern, is exactly one inch square, okay? You wanna make sure you check the first page and the second page because just because one page is correct doesn't mean the other one is. Also, do not change the orientation. Um, what I mean by that is I'm pretty sure this is in landscape orientation, but the rest of the pattern is in um, portrait orientation. So just have it on auto when you print and it'll print out correctly, okay? Um, these are the two pattern pieces that we'll show on camera. The other one, there's no need. Um, the only reason we'll show this is to show you how we punch these holes into the material and these um, slots. So normally I use my Cricut Maker to cut it and I know not everyone has one or a silhouette. So we wanted to show you guys how to do it without one of those machines because you definitely can. You also need some ribbon. If you don't have ribbon that's wide enough, you can also cut um, some thinner uh, like cotton fabric, either quilting cotton or um, cotton woven, but like try and get it the thinner stuff as possible. Like usually I can find that at Joann's. Um, it's a little thinner, you know, uh, quality. But this is ribbon I found in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. So that's where I get mine. You can also maybe check Amazon. I did not have any luck at Joann's, but mine's kind of small. Um, okay, so when you cut this, I recommend either using fray check at the end, or I use pinking shears so that when I'm handling it, it doesn't fray. Um, and if you cut it exactly to length, then and it frays, you may be a little short at the end. So you can cut it a little bit longer if you don't have either of those tools at your disposal. That way you'll make sure you have enough at the end and we'll just trim it down if needed. You'll also need some a zipper. So whether that's zipper by the yard or pre-bought zipper, um, but pay attention to the measurements because if you use zipper by the yard, she has you cut it longer than if you bought a store-bought zipper, so just pay attention to that, okay? Um, and this is size 5, which is what she recommends, okay? you also need a, um, a spring snap. Um, some people call them button snaps. Don't know why, they just do. Um, but... This is size 12 millimeters. I want to say the pattern calls for 12.5. If all you can find is 9 or 9.5, 10, whatever, um, that's totally fine. It's just going to change the overall look, but it will still function. It'll just be a smaller um, kind of ratio between this and your flat closure that it goes on, okay? Also, if you want to attach your own custom label or one that just is handmade, um, I'll show you where to do that today and what step I insert that in. If you want it somewhere else, that's totally your preference as well. Um, I, with this, I use double-sided tape. 
and then hand stitch it on. But I use the double sided tape to keep it in position when I'm stitching it. Um, also, if you're using one like this that needs to be sewn on, I also um, pull some thread before I thread my machine. I pull some thread off so I don't have to stop and unthread and rethread my machine to get the same thread. Okay. Um, also, I recommend having a glue stick, especially for the lining part of the fabric. In um, the written instructions that Lindsay has for this, she uses a spray adhesive as well. I use this instead of that because, well, to be honest, I have some. I just kind of lazy and don't want to go all the way outside to spray it. Um, so I use this instead and it's um, always works for me. So it's just a generic glue stick. So it is the purple and it dries clear. So that's also helpful because it tells me when it's dry. Okay. If you don't cut out with a Cricut or Silhouette, um, you can get a leather punch tool. You can also, um, I want to say a crocodile can has the appropriate size as well. The crocodile hurts my hand. I have one somewhere or a knockoff of it, but it kind of hurts my hand um, and always seems to get stuck. So um, Amy and Alma over at Seems So Awesome have these and I think they're talking about doing a pre-order for them. They had a limited run early on and then they're uh, maybe doing a pre-order soon. So keep an eye out. Um, but it comes with different size tips. I've already put on the one that fits the size hole we need to make exactly. Um, but this is a really awesome tool if you're like me with little ones or other people that are sleeping mostly while you sew. Um, then it's great. It's nice and quiet for that. Much quieter than the hammer and uh, anvil. Okay. Um, if you're like me and you want to cover all your raw edges of your cork or vinyl, then you also need some edge coat or uh, leather paint. This is the one I use. Um, I got it from Amazon. And I've also tried um, the actual stuff called edge coat with a K. Um, but I prefer this over that one. I have not tried any other brands, just those two, but this is the one I prefer from what I've tried. You will also need, obviously for the exterior, you need some vinyl, faux leather, cork, leather, um, you know, if you want to do kangaroo leather too, that would work. Um, just something that's a little bit thicker. Um, and when you pick vinyl, there's so many different types of vinyl. Don't do something with too much stretch. Um, this one doesn't have any stretch to it, so that's good. You don't want any stretch because all you're sewing, this is basically going to be, you know, the shell of your wallet. So you want it pretty sturdy. Um, yeah. And then for the lining, you'll need some quilting cotton or cotton woven. Um, and... Um, oh yeah, I know. So some of you may ask about waterproof canvas because I've had some questions about that already. Um, I would recommend against using that for the interior of this and the purse pal actually. Um, because when you have the exterior and you, you base the lining in with the glue and then fold it over, but you also have to remember you have, you know, your ribbon in there already. And so when you add, it's not quite folded like that when it's in there. But, um, you know, the more thickness you have in here, the bulkier it's going to be. So you definitely don't want waterproof canvas in there, in my opinion. I mean, if you don't mind the bulk, go ahead and, uh, you know, give it a shot. So last two tools you'll need. You will need a needle. And... Even if you're not going to hand stitch your label to your pocket pal, you still need a needle. And the reason being is that for the card slots, 
we're not going to back stitch on them. We're gonna pull the thread back so it's nice, clean stitching on the front and doesn't bulk up at all, okay? The other thing you're gonna need is a tool to actually apply your spring snap. So you can use an anvil set like this. And if you bought this set off Amazon, it comes with one. But if you don't, you can buy the anvil set separately. The other option for um, applying snaps is one of these, these uh, table presses. Um, you, If you're going to use a table press, you also need the die set for it. Make sure you have the correct one for your size of snaps, okay? Um, and that comes with four pieces, one for each uh, piece of a spring snap. Okay, so now that we've gone over that, I'm going to ask you to start cutting out your pattern pieces. Out of respect for the pattern maker, we try not to show pattern pieces on camera, except where absolutely necessary, like the, the holes and the slots there, okay? Um, so if you're going to use the uh, Cricut or Silhouette, then go ahead and pause and cut those and then come back and, and play and we'll move on to the next step. If you're going to hand cut them, I ask that you go ahead and cut out your flap closure, but pay attention to the measurements that Lindsay gives you in step one on page two, because this is the pattern piece. Don't use the pattern piece. It even says see step one for cutting instructions. The cutting instructions are gonna have you cut it wider than it's gonna end up being, okay? And the reason is, so if you end up cutting slightly narrower or don't match it up when you glue the two pieces together, then you can trim it down and they'll be super even on both sides, okay? Um, and then uh, cut out your lining piece. We'll use that later. But cut out this as well, the exterior. But only worry about the center cutout. Don't worry about the cutout of the card slots and the, um, the holes. We'll go over that later, okay? Um, but just cut out the basic shape. So that way... You'll be all prepared for those steps later, okay? So go ahead and pause and cut and then come back and hit play. Welcome back. So as you can see, I've cleared my workspace after cutting. And at this point, if you've cut out your pattern pieces on the Cricut or Silhouette, you can still follow along, except don't cut it down. Yours is already the correct size, okay? And um, obviously you already have the hole in there because the Cricut will already punch that hole for you. Okay, so if you did not use a Cricut or Silhouette and you're cutting manually like I am, you're going to apply glue to one side, and I've already done that and had to pause and check on the kids and come back. So I'm just going to touch up the glue <laughs> a little bit. And if you don't have a glue stick, you can use another type of glue. I would not do double-sided tape again total preference but uh, you really want glue in this case okay so what you're going to do is place one on top of the other so wrong sides together try and line them up as best you can but again that extra width is built in protection in case they're a little wonky okay so i'm going to set this under a book just for a few minutes to let it dry and really adhere um, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that it's dry, go ahead and cut it down to the measurement that she gives you. And it will equal, if you want to cut it down using the flat closure piece, you can do that too. Out of respect for the pattern maker, I did not show that on screen. Um, trying as little as possible to show uh, measurements. So what we're going to do now is going to go ahead and punch this hole here and if you cut on a Cricut or a silhouette of course yours is already done um so let's skip that but go ahead and line up and punch okay and 
you can see that hole punch did two layers, no problem. I just gave it a little extra press and made sure I could kind of feel it go all the way through, okay? Now, this is completely optional. If you want to leave it square, you can. If you prefer to round it out, you can. Um, but right now, I'm gonna just snip the corners off. And I just do the little bit, okay? Again, just a tiny little bit. Oops. And sharpen. So when it's a little, you can see, just kind of just cut the corners off, okay? So it's not completely square. And it gets a little something extra, okay? And then now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch. And I use a stitch length of four to top stitch around the edge. And you don't have to back stitch at either end because this uh, end is gonna be in, um, it'll be tucked in, so it'll be sewn over and tucked in, so it won't matter. But go ahead and top stitch that, okay? We'll go over to the machine. Okay, so I don't have the best um, area for filming here, but basically what I'm gonna do is, this is the um, regular foot that came with the machine, so I'm just gonna line it up right with the edge of the material, and we're gonna go slow, and again, I use a, a four for my stitch length when I top stitch, okay? And if you want to, you can back stitch um, at the end and start, but I don't need, I don't feel the need to. So just slow and steady. And when you get to the corner, needle down. Okay, so there we have top stitched. I want to be a little twist it. Okay, there we go. So top stitch, and I'm using a variegated purple thread. That's why it looks like it kind of disappears at some point. Um, but then we can trim these ends. Okay, and then next we're gonna get our edge coat out. If you're going to edge coat your raw edges, okay? If not, um, you can skip that part. Okay, so with edge coat, you always wanna protect your workspace. Um, if you wanna do it on an old cardboard box lid or whatever, um, I use a couple layers of paper towels. Um, and we're just gonna, you can ignore this raw edge here on the back. Um, because it's, again, it's going to be hidden in the final product. So, let's shake it up. Um, this brand comes with a brush on the inside. I don't use it. Um, I just use the roller. So, I'm going to just dip and roll it on the edge carefully. Um, and I probably need, I usually like mine at like three coats, um, but it depends on like which vinyl I'm using. Like this has a really, um, like soft backing, so those always seem to like soak it up a little bit more. So again, here it's a slow. And 
steady so you just get just the edges there I always get it everywhere else, so you know you're not alone if you do too. Okay. Um. So we'll let that dry, and then, yeah, we'll probably do um, at least one more coat. Okay. Okay. So when your um, strap piece is completely dry and has as many coats as you want on the edge, or if you skipped it, that's fine too. Um, we're going to want to attach the snap piece that goes in to this hole here. Okay. Um, so the pieces that go in, these are the two pieces that will be going in. So these are opposites each other. This is the one that will show. Um, so if you're using the press, it goes in the bottom piece. And then in the top one, this one snaps in actually really nicely okay um but these wind up being like this on either side okay so that's the side that shows and this is the side that'll snap into the other piece okay um so those are the ones that go into the flap so i already have a set loaded in here um so figure out which side you want to be the top and bottom um, doesn't matter a whole lot, just be personal preference on your top stitching. Um, either one, or maybe which colors landed if you used variegated thread like I did. So, either way, so you're going to place the bottom, or the top, face down, okay, on your press. So, line it up. Okay, I'm going to turn it so I can actually press down here, let's see, okay, okay, so maybe that's a better angle, so, um, again, the, whatever the top is, is going to be face down, okay, so you're going to end up slotting this piece through so the top and the bottom so and then it just rests in to this piece of the the cam snap or press okay okay so just make sure it's rested in there and you're just gonna press down not too hard because otherwise you get a divot and I usually press way too hard and I carefully wiggle it out of the top there and well uh yeah i press a little too hard every time <laughs> every time i knew it was coming so there you have it so then your strap connector is done and we'll move on to um the exterior okay so what you're going to do now is line up your paper pattern piece with your um, exterior vinyl piece, okay? Um, you can use clips in this step. I don't, but that's a personal preference. So if you want to use clips, by all means. Um, at this point, you're going to line up the punch. And you can see it's all gone there. Next one. Okay. And yes, I know I really got the edge paint all over everything. Okay, those are punching out nicely. Okay, 
So once all the holes are punched out, you're going to, and you can use um, like a knife blade or like a craft knife. Um, I use my rotary cutter because that's what I have. Um, you're going to start at the back. And you want to make sure not to cross over to this side of the hole, but you kind of just press down and go slow and then stop when you get to the other hole, okay? And you can use snips if you want to closer to the, to the hole, okay? Like that one, I think, will best work. Okay, there we go. And then do that for all three of them, okay? And just make sure that you cut through all the way before removing the pattern piece. Um, especially if you're like me and didn't use um, clips to attach it. So just making sure it went all the way through. Okay, so as you can see, it punched through really nicely. Um, thank you again, ladies, so much for sending that to me. Um, yeah, you can't even tell that, like, if I compared this to one cut on my Cricut, I wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. The punch is really nice, like, nice, even circles. Any of that fuzzy you see is just the, the back is really fuzzy. Um, but really nice clean circles. Thank you again, ladies. Um, so here's where, if you're going to, there it is. If you're going to attach a custom label, okay? Um, you can choose where to put it on my pocket house. I place them here along the pocket um, because essentially this is gonna just be closed and when I first did this I debated a lot about here over here but I want it to kind of be um, you know the the focus but out of the way too um, and I really need to get some other colors of the leather <laughs> but so what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the double-sided tape on the back here just to kind of help center it along this line. Um, keep in mind, you are gonna top stitch around this later um, in tomorrow's steps. So we wanna make sure that you leave room for the top stitching there, okay? But just a little bit and it's just to kind of, you know, help keep it in place. And if you wanna attach a metal label you totally can. Um, that is up to you. Okay. So I just tried to make sure it was spaced, you know, centered. Centered visually is fine, but just trying to make sure this spacing here was equal. Okay. And then we're just going to Take your thread and needle if you already prepped that. And go ahead and attach that, okay? So because I put a double-sided tape, the thread is really gonna extra, like, be extra support for that double-sided tape and because I didn't go through the ends um, but I just do probably a couple like two or three loops on each I'm trying to stay in focus here um, two or three loops each here okay.
Okay, and then just make sure the last one, I always go under and just knot it. And then at this point, you can add some glue if you want to the back um, at each end of those, at each end of those knots if you want, okay? But now we have it attached. Okay, so now we're gonna set this piece aside and we're gonna take your whitening, okay? And on the wrong side here is really where the glue stick is handy too. You're gonna put glue, you wanna do a glue stick or double-sided tape here, not um, anything liquid. Um, so you're gonna apply the glue stick all the way around and carefully and try and keep it even width but fold it back okay and if you want to iron this before you add glue just so you're at a equal distance that's totally up to you personal preference i just glue and kind of fold it back okay This is the other reason why I like the purple is it really, really shows up where you have it. Um, you know, when you show it like this, when you have it wider than the, the fabric's gonna go, it tells you when it's dry. Um, and it really doesn't take that long to dry. Like, honestly, if this is your first one, I maybe do one edge at a time, not all of it. If you're using a glue stick. Because part of, you can see it's probably already partially drying. Trying to stay in focus. Okay. So, and there we have it. End of J1. So you can see, and then you can see the purple, but it'll, it'll dry, promise. Um, and then you won't see purple, let's be clear. But this is what it's going to look like from the right side. I'm going to glue that little piece down. Little straggler. There we go. Okay. So... There you have it. Here you can see all the pieces that you should have at the end of day one sew along. The liner, the exterior with your handmade tag if you're gonna attach one, the zipper puller on the zipper tape, as well as your snap tab all ready to go with edge coat if you wanted to have it with that. And um, thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you had fun. We'll see you tomorrow. And a special thank you to Lindsay of Lynn's Handmade for allowing us to do this so long and creating such an awesome pattern. Thank you, everyone.